So it's getting cold here in Washington, D.C., and we were walking to my car, and my girlfriend was like, you know, can you warm it up? Can you get it started remotely? I was like, I don't want to get hacked. On top of that, I have like a 2005. All right, Sam, it's pronounced Hyundai. You got it? It's a Korean word, so got it. Hyundai, two syllables. Got it. 2005 Hyundai Elantra. Hyundai. Hyundai. So the reason I didn't want to unlock the car is because most modern key fobs are IoT device and they're very vulnerable to attack. So let me actually show you how this attack would work. So we have a victim and all they want to do is remotely unlock their car. So how a key fob works is actually just sending out a RF signal to the car. And in the modern day, these RF signals are actually transmitted in the form of a code. So each code is uh, different, each use, and it's unique. So meaning it can be used only once, and if a car receives the same code twice, it's going to reject the second code uh, because it's already been used. Okay, so that's important context for how this attack works. So what happens is the victim is trying to send this code uh, out to their car. But we have an attacker who what they're going to do is actually intercept this signal. Okay? At the same time, and this is called jamming, by the way, they have a, a jammer or device that's going to block this signal. At the same time, they're also going to sniff the traffic so they steal the code. So they have code number one. It's been blocked and sniffed uh, by the attacker. So from the victim's perspective, the car obviously doesn't unlock. It doesn't work. So they're going to send a code number two. What the attacker does is the same thing. They actually jam and sniff again. So they now have captured code number two. Now what they do next is pretty clever. They will actually forward, since they have both codes, they're gonna forward, forward on code number one. So the car is going to accept the code as if it came from the victim and the car is going to unlock. So from the victim's perspective, the car is unlocked, it just took me two clicks and I'm good to go. But the thing is the attacker has now captured and now owns code number two that they can use at a later time. So this attack that we just looked at is sometimes referred to as a rolling code attack because rolling code is the type of code that gets transmitted by that FOB. Okay, so hope you found this interesting. Remember, this is what happens when IoT device manufacturers prioritize ease of use over security. So no matter how cold it is, make sure you don't use your fob and you go up and you just unlock your car. We'll see you next week.